the latest big screen adaptation of the video game franchise opened in first place with $22.5 million. Anime adventure Demon Slayer the movie Mugen Train debuted in second place with a strong $19.5 million. I think I shorten these titles, don't they? Godzilla vs. Kong fell to third place after three weekends on the top. $4.2 million gave it a domestic total of more than $86 million. The revenge thriller Nobody made $1.9 million for a fourth place finish. Raya and the Last Dragon finished in the top five for the eighth straight weekend, earning $1.7 million. Celtic punk band the Dropkick Murphys are set to release their new first album. Their new first album? Their first new album. Dyslexia is a bad thing. First new album in four years this week. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with singer Ken Casey about the release. That's Queen of Suffolk County from the Dropkick Murphy's latest, Turn Up That Dial, the band's first new album in four years. She was the toast of the town. We had to finish it during the pandemic. We had most of the basic tracks done, save for one, but it gave us a lot of extra time to work on things. Every album, we're in the midst of such touring and this and that, and you always say, ah, you know, I wish we did this differently. And I don't really feel that in this album because we had plenty of time to think about. Album songs range from serious. The last song in the album, which was actually written pre-pandemic, I uh, Wish You Were Here, uh, as a tribute to Al, my bandmate's father, who passed away. However, it seems so apropos to this year. So as much as we're having a good time for 10 songs on the album, it seemed fitting to not totally ignore the situation, end the song with a little sincere and, you know, Pod felt look back at everyone that we've lost. To Silly, with a song based on a story that happened to the band's producer. Nick Jones from The Clash was apparently working in the other studio. Ted had put his pudding in the fridge. It's a common fridge, didn't put his name on it. Mick Jones came out, saw our pudding there, decided to have a snack. In these trying times, the idea of the album of that song was to just put a smile on people's face, be uplifting. You know, maybe it was funny, maybe it wasn't, but at least at least be not downtrodden, you know. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, Mike and Fiona are going head to head on the football field today. Now we're in pads. They're just doing an obstacle course, and it is a big race to the finish. All right, and Jen's checking out that new rooftop bar with the incredible view at the Thompson. It's an encore episode of SA Live. Hey, Fiona and Jen. Oh, uh, well, happy Monday. We have got a little bit of everything on today's show for you. Yep, and we are giving you a sneak peek of one of the newest rooftop bars in town. Let me tell you, you can have a cocktail, some delicious food, and just enjoy and take in the city lines. And Mike and I hit the football field in an obstacle course race to the finish. And I'm telling you, you guys, it is so worth it and made my day to see Mike Osterhage try to master a hamster ball. <laughs> Yes, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we have once in a while Mobile Zoo here bringing some furry and some not so furry animals to show us. We're getting up close. And how about some unicorn themed treats with local baker Addie Bear Sweets. And we're going to see some amazing gem cakes. Yes, and David Elder is checking out a tasty spot for Texas Eats. Hope you're hungry. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Welcome back. Right now we're at 80 degrees. We'll be up close to 90 today, partly cloudy. Chance of showers and storms tomorrow. Uh, we could see some stronger storms, especially out west. That chance continues into Wednesday. Our best chance of rain Wednesday night, Thursday morning does clear out by the end of the work week, guys. Great. Thank you. You know, whenever Mike and Fiona have one of those competitions, it usually makes for pretty good TV. Well, wasn't I think Fiona's like a professional athlete. Yeah. So. And then there's Mike. And then there's Mike who wanted to be one. It all starts right now. 
Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Well, hello and happy Friday. We're kicking off the weekend with a dose of magic. How gorgeous is that? We're celebrating National Unicorn Day with this incredible cake made by a San Antonio baker who has gained a huge following on TikTok, and you can see why. Happy Friday. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. It is a beautiful day here at Market Square. Yes, it is. And we have some friends that we just met right behind us, these lovely young ladies. A couple yeah. of them are here visiting from Mexico City. That's Hi. Nora and Patty, who are visiting from Mexico City. They're Thank fabulous you. friends here in San Antonio. Yes. Welcome. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, wait do you see these beautiful treats we have. Well, a fun fact, since we're celebrating National Unicorn Day, is that the unicorn has been one of the most popular mythical creatures since ancient Greek times. That I did not know. I'm surprised. But you know a lot. <laughs> I do know. Do you know what unicorns eat for breakfast? No. <laughs> Horn flakes. All right. <laughs> He'll be here for 55 more minutes. <laughs> okay, when we saw these incredible pictures that you're looking at right now, we knew this baker could make us something magical for National Unicorn Day. She had almost 200,000 likes on TikTok last year and has been featured on baking blogs all over Instagram. Yes, Lori Avila McDonald, the owner of Addy Bear Sweets, joins us with a simple unicorn treat that you can make at home and a beautiful dessert she would love to make for you your family. Hey yes, there. Good hi, afternoon. Ariel. That is just remarkable looking that cake. <laughs> Thank you. And all the cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, what are we making today? So we're going to make unicorn cake gems and you have an example right in front of you. Okay. Uh, so what you'll do first is you'll get your empty mold and your chocolate melted in the microwave. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to grab a spoonful of chocolate and put it into your mold and just kind of get it all in there, right? Yes, and then you have a brush so you can brush it into the grooves. And where can you find these molds? Um, I got them on uh, Amazon. Okay. Yes. Like everything else in the world, you can right. on Amazon. <laughs> they have everything. So you'd, you'd want mm -hmm. this kind of smooth and then let it dry and put another layer yes, on there? Yes, and when you're done, you can tap it to get like the air bubbles out. Got it, and smooth it out. Oh yeah, look at that, when you, <laughs> when you tap it down, it gets real nice and smooth in there like that. Yes, and then once okay. it once it dries, you can grab your uh, dry one. Okay, so after it dries, about how long does it take to dry? It's probably like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Stick in the fridge or something mm -hmm. too? Okay. So, so then you grab your dry one, grab a cake ball. with It's basically cake just mixed with buttercream. Mm -hmm. And okay. then you put it in your mold, just kind of fit it down into like the push cake. It? Yes. Push it right you in. Just push it Shape in. It. Okay. Perfect. And then you grab a, scoo a spoonful of chocolate and then just cover it. So get that in there. And, and then, then one more time <laughs> yes. with the chocolate. Now, where did the name Addie Bear Sweets come from? It comes from my niece. Um, she kind of inspired me to start baking. I've always baked, but she inspired me to take it to the next level. We, we've done a lot of baking together, so I named it after her. Okay. And the whole 200,000 likes on TikTok and everything, showing how these little things are made, yes. which I gotta show you this. Look at all those are handmade, all her little decorations in there. Now you said you do have some molds, but still all that is done, hiked in by hand, then you have to paint it all, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, it's just they're, they're they're too pretty to eat. I, I mean, they really they really just are. Okay, so, so that would dry. Yes, mm -hmm. and then you grab your uh, your one that's ready to decorate. Okay, and then um, you grab your piping bag and just cut the tip off. Okay. And the what, smaller the better. There we go. And then you can choose whichever decorations you would like to put on your mold. Oh, so this is just the glue? Yes, it's like glue, edible glue. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab this one, one. I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to grab this go. one to start. <laughs> okay. Yes. So in your first year of baking, you were asked to make treats for a fiesta event, right? Yes. Um, it was uh, for the Humane Society El Rey Fido. Oh, that's always a great <laughs> organization and a great event going on. Okay, and then if Ooh, somebody... Oh, so that's, that's them on the mm -hmm. screen, right? That you were yeah. just talking about? <laughs> 
Yes, and I just had started at that time. They actually really wanted me to make more than I could handle, so I had to kind of downscale it a little bit, but it was definitely a lot of fun. So this is what, just kind of like, just therapy when you just kind of kick back and do all these little intricate, delicate mm -hmm. things. What all can you make? Can you basically do anything? If I came up with some great cake or design I wanted, you could do it, right? Um, mostly. I'd say I'm always up for a challenge, so. Okay, what's the most unusual thing somebody's asked you to make? The most unusual thing? Uh, hmm. Oh, these are like little bunny ears Someone asked here. me to make like a lady's chest, but I had to tell oh. them I couldn't do that. <laughs> Okay, and tell us about this. So this is a cake. unicorn cake that I made um, for Unicorn Day. I used some different chocolate molds painted with gold. I made it really girly, very springish. Um, just the perfect uh, cake for a girl's birthday. And if, uh, you know, this is the time of year when people have like a little tea or get together or something like that. So if somebody wanted some little um, little cakes, uh, little cupcakes, little, little things to snack on, perfect. You can, definitely. You can outfit the whole thing. Of course, right? do the dessert table, little bites, definitely. Right. And I love the cake pops that look like actual ice cream bars over there. Yes, those are called cake sickles. So they are in a popsicle mold and you decorate them pretty much the same, just with a stick. That's just, it, it, they don't look real. That's how good they look, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the view. I couldn't get the Hold ears on. to stick. Here, so, okay, here are our finished products. Here, here's mine. Okay, and there's, there's Mike. So, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I almost lost that one. There we uh, go. And ladies, who's is best? Mine? Yeah, mine is prettiest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that, you can each have one of these, ladies. There you go. Take one. Well, for more information <laughs> on Addie Bear Sweet, just go to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the ad scene on SA Live tab. You got to bribe them to yes. this. <laughs> All right. All right, from magic creatures to magical views of the city, The Moon's Daughters is one of the newest restaurants here in town. It is perched 20 stories above the Riverwalk, and that's where Jen Tobias Trusky is right now. So, hey, what's better, the food or that view? Wow. I, equally, they're equally beautiful. I'll show you food in a second, but first take this in. Take in the view here at The Moon's Daughters. Isn't this gorgeous? I love it. I'm a little scared of heights, but that's okay. <laughs> it's gorgeous here, and the executive chef, Robert Gonthu, joins me now, and we are going to make what exactly? Because this looks gorgeous. Um, so we're going to be making uh, black uh, sea bass. Um, they're known to be caught off of the, the east coast, uh, kind of east. Okay. Um, what we do is we start off with a little bit of oil, and then it's really, really important that we get it super, super dry. So we're going to take the fish, and we have these special towels that we use. Fish to towels. Dry it off. <laughs> and then we're gonna season it with salt and pepper. Why do you have to get it so dry? So, um, I don't know if you've ever had a skin on fish where, um, you know, it just wasn't crispy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this this actually helps. It Ooh. helps uh, crisp up the skin um, and make the fish super, super delicious. So always, 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 Place the fish away from you, so okay. that way, inevitably, when the oil splashes, it splashes that way. Right? Yes, that's so happened to me several times. I like times. to weigh <laughs> the fish down to kind of give it some extra chance to get crispy. This menu has a Mediterranean feel, and you said many items on here that you can't find anywhere in yeah, San Antonio. So, uh, part of Part of my mission when I was designing this menu when I came back to the city um, was to uh, bring things that I learned um, in other cities to San Antonio. So, um, you know, I, I made it my mission to kind of bring new ingredients um, mm -hmm. that I, I couldn't find. And actually, it was a real big challenge mm -hmm. um, trying to source um, some of these it's like our dry aged beef burger. Um, it was really hard to find ground dry aged beef, um, so we ended up having to do it in house. So, okay. um, so a lot of a lot of the things on the menu um, kind of, of are of that nature. So, got it. So a unique experience. So we have our artichoke puree, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna Smells check amazing, on this fish. by the way. <laughs> 
and you guys open up four, so this is definitely a dinner spot that you'll want to come out to. And you can make reservations right out here, but if you're gonna sit inside, you're still welcome to do a walk-in, correct? Yes, yeah, res reservations are recommended, um, but they're not required. Um, we kind of have to have weather planned, so, you know, obviously it's a beautiful day right now, but if it, you know, rains or snows, um, it, it could uh, kind of, happen. <laughs> yeah, it could present a challenge. So we bring everybody inside if yes. that happens. Um, so that's why we only reserve out here. Okay. All right. So we're gonna check on this guy. Oops, let me just that. All right, so he's cooking this up. And um, anything else on the menu that you wanna maybe recommend for people who are watching today that might wanna consider dinner here? So one of our biggest, um, best items is our octopus skewers. Um, so we sous vide them uh, for uh, four hours. Um, in a really slow, slow cook, cooking process. And then we grill them to order. Um, we serve them beautifully on um, these wooden blocks where they stand up, kind of like a, a kraken. So you, you know, have the, the octopus uh, arms out there. How's the fish looking now? I'm um, almost done, almost done. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna throw some squash well, in there. he's gonna finish cooking the squash, but I want you guys to just take in this view while Robert continues to cook and uh, you can see the tower there. KSAT's not too far from here. They so kindly set up the, uh, the binocular telescope thing over here where we could see KSAT. And this is just gorgeous to be here and then have this gorgeous backdrop. Talk about photo ops, right? And here we go, the fish is getting plated here. And also we're gonna make cocktails. That's in the second half of the show. And I'm gonna, you want me to add my greens on here? Yes, yes, Okay, please. we're gonna finish off here. And this is the, one more time. The uh, black sea bass. Black sea bass, one of many items that you can try at the Moon's Daughters. Chef, thank you so much. We are gonna dig in here. Sorry guys that you uh, can't have any of this. I promise, I send my love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which I'm more impressed by, the viewer the food right? both look in, but that view up there, mm, wow. It's gorgeous. It so yes. great. All right, and we're gonna see, of course, more from Jen yep. a little later in the show with some of those cocktails. You wanna impress your date? That mm -hmm. looks like it would be a perfect, uh, I think Jen likes it too. Save some for us, Jen. Perfect spot for a yep. date night up mm -hmm. there, you know, maybe right. watching the sun go down mm -hmm. or, you know, gazing at the stars. Mm -hmm. Yes. Get romantic. Yes. What's a good date night spot for you? Date night spot for me, I love Chart House there at Tower of America. They have a great happy hour menu too. Yes, yeah, similar similar view and you, you get to see the escarpment out there off in the hills as well. Right up there. There we go. There's a view of the Chart House on the top of the uh, Tower of the Americas. And so we want to know what is your great place for a date? For a date night. Yes. Jen, what about you? Um, I mean, this might be the new favorite here because I'd love to see how this looks. They're open late, by the way, so just to kind of see the skyline at night, that would be really nice. Uh, anything outside for me, uh, if there's live music, I'm happy. <laughs> what about you, Mike? <laughs> Um, you know, I love going up there to the uh, the chart house. That's why I was, but dining anywhere outside when the weather's kind of like this. Yes. I love that. It's just nice and relaxing. Yes. All right. So let us know at SLF Case Back on uh, <laughs> SA Life ASAP on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll show some of those a little later on in the show. All right. Still ahead on SA Live. We're having a close encounter of the cute kind. This is Loki the ferret, and we're about to find out how ferrets used to help humans hunt. right now and you can have these guys come to you right he is adorable this is amanda winter and she is the owner and founder of one in a wild i love the name of that so you're almost right, right. it's once, once in a, a wild, once in a wild. My just apologies. like once in a wild but with wild mm -hmm. <laughs> yes and you are a mobile zoo that of course uh you know comes to wherever whether it's a party a home anything like that right so folks can kind of get up close encounters with these animals yeah. okay tell us about who you've got right there. So this is one of our ferrets, Loki. He does have a brother named Thor, of course, right? <laughs> and he is a ferret. Um, you might have seen a ferret before. He's an extra large ferret, though. And like we were talking about a little bit ago, um, ferrets were originally domesticated in Europe from the European pole cat for hunting purposes over 2,500 years ago. And you <laughs> said his name, Loki, of course, fans mm -hmm. of all the, the movies, yeah. Loki, but you said that's part of North and they were raised in the uh, North.
Norway, right? Yeah, so they're from all over Europe, really, and even North Africa as a species of European polecat, which is basically a big weasel that lives okay. out in Europe. Um, but yes, we chose the names uh, the the god of thunder, Thor, and the god of mischief, Loki, right? Um, because that comes from Europe as well. Okay. And the types <laughs> of animals they helped hunt were like rabbits or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So they would hunt rabbits down in their tunnels because they're very good at tunneling underground. In fact, this type of animal would also live in a tunnel underground. Um, and they also would hunt vermin like rats and mice in people's homes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do they make good pets? Because I've seen people that have ferrets as pets. Mike, that's a good question. Um, I think they make decent pets for the right family, but we always encourage everyone out there to do your research, whether it's a dog or a cat you're adopting or an exotic animal like anything else, right? Because with them, it's either stop or go <laughs> a, a nine to nothing, right? Yeah, ferrets are usually either play, 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 sleeping really hard, or eating their food. And as you can see, he's eating right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to get to the next animal here, okay. the guinea pig that Mike has. But, you know, you do in in person or virtual visits, right? Absolutely. If you want to go to our website, onceinawild.com, that will give you more information about booking your encounter, whether it be virtual or in person. All right. This little guy, I have never seen hair. My boys had guinea pigs years ago, and they didn't get this long. I the believe he, he's been to the spa lately. Look at this thing. <laughs> and he is Peru, because these were first developed in, in, or domesticated in Peru, right? Correct. Well, they were domesticated by the Incas down in Peru, actually, over 5,000 years ago. Okay, why is his hair so long? <laughs> well, he's a special breed called a Peruvian guinea pig. How appropriate. We are just talking about Peru. Mm -hmm. um, but there's many different breeds of domestic guinea pigs now, including the Peruvian, which have long hair, and they can come in different colors as well. Oh my gosh, look, they sleep like you do, Mike, just about four hours a day. <laughs> 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 and you said his hair is going to grow unless he gets a haircut, right? Correct. It's just like our hair, or if you have like a Maltese dog or something like that, they do need haircuts and lots of baths and conditioner as well. And guinea pigs, the nice thing about them, they make wonderful pets. They're sweet, they're lovable, they love to be cuddled and held and everything too. I agree. They're very social. They live in groups together called herds, actually. And we always recommend uh, adoption before shopping for a guinea pig. And there's an adoption uh, organization right here in San Antonio as well. Hi. Okay. <laughs> now you are holding what we were uh, what was the mystery before razor sharp teeth four feet long and cold blooded right <laughs> I don't know how well you can see her tail but her tail is extra long so this is Joanna the iguana she's a green iguana these guys are found mostly in Central America as well as South America and they do indeed have razor sharp teeth but they are vegetarian they only eat uh, the leaves of trees as well as flowers and things like that okay Oh my, you're just, look at the coloring. Wow. Right? Yeah. And those things are, are pets too, because I know a lot of people, if they have allergies to Ooh. animals with fur and, and dander, they are, that doesn't look like it's going to be cuddly. They have a third um, eye? They sure do. You saw our fact pop up there. Yes. So one of my favorite facts about an iguana, and some lizards as well, some other lizards, is they have a clear scale on top of their head, which functions kind of like a third eye. That allows them to take naps and still look out for predators. Wow. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> really? It's like a typical Yeah, it's neat, right? So an <laughs> eye in the back of your head, almost. And you mentioned how some people have them for pets. We do not recommend iguanas for pets, but we do recommend some lizards for the right family, like bearded dragons. That's a much better choice. Iguanas are not good pets. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah, but she is awesome. <laughs> I just thought right. they were. The right. snake. So Go now ahead. we've got the snake. So while you're you're putting away Joanna the iguana, I am holding a California king snake, right? King snake that's named that is correct. which is just greatness. <laughs> that is correct. So he is um, a California king snake. They're found, of course, in where? California. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not a trick question. So California and surrounding states right here in the U.S. Is it related to the one that you find around here? I mean, I know uh, all snakes bit. are related. So there are king snake species in Texas as well, and king snakes are really famous for what they eat. Can you guess what that might be? Go ahead, Mike. Rattlesnakes. Very good. Very, very good. Yes, they can. So king snakes can actually be immune to most snake venom and eat rattlesnakes, copperheads, cottonmouth, as well as coral snakes sometimes. But they also eat a variety of other animals, too. 70, 70 different animals. And if you want her to come to your house, your party, kids' party, something like that, it's kind of a, a shopping list. You can pick the ones you want, right? Absolutely. We're fully custom, and you can either opt to do more of a petting experience, animal presentation, or even a virtual experience as well. Okay. Right. And tell folks how to find you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the best way to find us is onceinawilds.com that has all of our social media information as well as our contact information.
now we're here on the northeast side of San Antonio, right here on Walsham Road, to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up some delicious soul food. Let's go inside Mama Lou's Soul Food and Kitchen. now is Tasha Willis. In front of us, we have all this delicious food. Everything looks absolutely fantastic out here, but I gotta know, who's Mama Lou? Mama Lou is my great-grandmother. Oh, that's her right there. Right here. And then her daughter is Lou Esther, which is my grandmother. Why name a restaurant after her? A lot of people forget where they came from, and we just did it as a tribute to honor our grandmothers. What do we have in front of us? This all looks absolutely delicious. We got some oxtails uh, over rice, mother wow. with brown gravy. Uh, we have our, our pork chop, fried pork chops, along with some fried chicken, mm. as well as some fried catfish. Yes. A lot of people haven't tried oxtail before. Oxtail is actually the tail of the cow. Uh, I used to call it brisket, but people told me stop calling it brisket, but it, it is the look cow. How, the look how tender it. that is. I mean, it just falls it's apart. Good. We get some of the rice, a little bit of the gravy on there. So is this all your great grandmother's recipes or is this just family recipes in general? This is not all of my grandmother's recipes. I actually, we, this is just a tribute to the grandmothers of some good food that they will be proud of that wow. we serve into our community. That's what this is. Incredible. You gotta get it with the gravy. You gotta get it with the rice and it just falls apart. It tastes just like brisket. So if you never had it before, you're a little apprehensive about trying it. Imagine brisket, but just stewed up with all the right seasonings, all the right rice and, and gravy on top. I mean, it is fantastic. Extremely tender. I mean, it's just falling right off the bone right there. This is where it's at. Delicious. The rice has a really nice uh, puffy texture to it. And then you have the gravy on there. The sauce is killer. People want to know, you got do you have fried chicken on the menu? You guys got fried chicken on yes. the menu. Yes. And that's what we have right here. Is this a standard order, like a three-piece? Yes, this is a three-piece. Our one-meat plate comes with three pieces of chicken. Wow. Yes. That looks good. Yes. <laughs> All right, I got to take a bite out of this. Got to see what's going on. Wow. <laughs> It's flavorful. Yeah. It's pretty flavorful. This is loaded. Mm. I love how simple you guys made everything. It's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It just, it has the essence of salt, pepper, a really good dredge, a nice breading, a good coating on there, yes. fried nice, yes. flavored down to the bone. Yes. But you're doing it right. Yes. Wow. Now we jump over. You have all these proteins, all these entrees, but they're only as good as the sides that come with them. So we have right. over here some different items. Talk to me about what's going on right here. Candy yams. Candied yams. They're real cut candied yams. What you got here? Black eyed peas, mm -hmm. greens, collard greens, and mac and cheese, along with some fried okra. Of course, you gotta have the fried okra going on. Candied yams, what goes into your recipe My here? goodness. You know the right stuff. Butter, <laughs> oh, yeah. brown sugar, cinnamon, the real stuff. The real stuff. The <laughs> you can smell it. It's mm. Thanksgiving again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. That's just a meal in itself. I, I know. You just order that, you're good to go. <laughs> this is the one. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. <laughs> Everybody loves mac and cheese. Everybody loves mac and cheese. This is where it's at, right here. Mama Luce has a lot of different side items on the menu, including collard greens, fried okra, mac and cheese, black eyed peas. But the one you gotta try is the candied yams. These things are rocking. I'm just stop. taking a tour of the South right now. You, it really that's is. That's right. That's really what this is. Talk oh, to me about yeah. the different sweets you got going on. Of course, we got that banana pudding. Oh. We got that sweet potato pie. Now, can people, this looks like you got a drive through going on. Can people also come up curbside? Can they pick up food as well? Yes, we got curbside, drive through also call-in orders. So we give out the Mama Lou's card so they can feel free to call in. That way we can have their um, orders ready when they get here. You guys can come out here. It's right on the northeast side of San Antonio. I mean, this is where it's at. You it can is. come get your food, come get your soul food out here. This is where, I mean, get the oxtail. Oh my gosh, you're gonna fall in love with them, especially if you've never had them. Oh. They have the desserts, they got the mac and cheese, they got the fried chicken, the catfish, fried pork chops. Mm-hmm. This is where it's at. And of course, banana pudding. You making me want to eat something. I'm all, you making me want to <laughs> eat something right now. <laughs> We gotta start.
start stretching. I, oh, in fact, you know, I think yeah, yeah, I probably should have started training for this six weeks ago. We're just going to have to stretch this from going from one end to the other on these yes, things. You brought games to you right here to the Central Catholic Field. Tell us a little bit about what you do because well, you bring the fun. We do. We're all about the funness and we have a little bit of uh, this and that for everyone. So whatever sport you're into, basketball, football, baseball, soccer. And again, you said you have every sport lined up behind us there, right? We do. So we're going to pick your poison back here. We've okay. got some human hamster balls. We have an 80 foot off course and slide. Uh, this is just a, a taste of what we have in the warehouse. So, okay, so you don't necessarily need a football field of a backyard for this stuff because you can have a lot of this coming to your home, right? No, you hit the key word. We've had every one of these activities in people's backyards for private parties. Not like eight of them, but we've had one or two. Okay, how about the whole cleaning in between, you know, parties and everything? The new normal. We ha we have to do things a little differently than we did a year ago. So Sanitize Pro is our partners. We actually sanitize everything professionally with electrostatic sprayers before anyone touches anything. And during the course of the event or party, we re-sanitize as the party goes on because we want it safe and healthy for the kiddos and big kids too. All right, no let's time get like the present. <laughs> we have the 80-foot obstacle course. It's a dual head-to-head -head race, which means head the head. Oh man. You go through over under and at the end there's a 20 foot slide you gotta climb and go down. From three, oh, two, Lord. one, go! Ah! Jeez, oh god, this is oh, oh. Head, Fiona's off, she's ahead. Ah! We got him. Oh, oh, she's got a neck. Oh, hey, oh, she's oh, really good. It it looks graceful and she's tumbling over the bed. Mike's still <laughs> struggling but coming on. Here we are at the base of the mouth. KSAB climbing the mountain. Come on Mike, get up there. Come on, Fiona. She's, ah. making it. She's making it. Mike's closing in. Coming up on her. Oh, there she is. What's that on the top? We might be a little unfair. Hand to hand combat going on. And she wins. Touch the ground first. Yes! Fiona takes it. Mike seems to be. Oh, there we go. That's one way to come down. There we go. Nicely done. Okay, I'm dizzy. All right, Mike. About the eliminator. Quite simply is you want to throw your balls through these holes so that you have nothing on your side. When you okay. eliminate all the balls from your side, you eliminate your opponent and you win. Go! Oh, oh. Mike just threw it. Now that was a little deceptive there. I think some cheating was going on. Cheating was going on. You're gonna won easily, even with Mike cheating. All right, FIFA shootout. Pretty simple. Soccer ball, soccer goal, the holes score. The non-holes don't score, so we want to shoot it through the hole. Do you play soccer? No, okay. not since elementary school. Noonan. Oh, that was close. <laughs> oh! <laughs> don't let me forget that! <laughs> Mike's up. There we Mike's go. up. No pressure. There's nope. one. That's his foot. Does not count. Feet don't count. Hit him in the head. Oh, oh under his chest. Throw a hole. Oh, ah. close. Our winner is Fiona. Oh. Ah. Oh. oh so close. So close. If I had a better receiver, she did. Oh. <laughs> I got there. Oh, get close. I know you did. Major League Baseball batter up, hovering baseball, pretty simple. You step up into the batter's box, you swing away, got the crowd. Good contact. Jeez. Maybe you're going to... Oh, good line drive. Look at that. Oh, double! <laughs> Hit it. Oh, yeah! Oh. That was, a... that was legitimate. Oh. Ah. That was a good rip. Got a double. Good rip. A few more tries than Fiona, but... Basketball, free throw challenge, the step up, dual side by side, first baskets in 15 seconds, win. Fiona got off the lead, Fiona's got, oh, she's got the lead going on. Fiona's got a slight lead, Mike's got a dry foul here. There we go, Mike's on the board. Three, two, one, last shot, down. Yeah. Seven on Mike's side, four on Fiona, Mike is the winner. Seven to and four. I never did make the team in junior high school. <laughs> All right, Mike, tell folks how they can make this happen for themselves. It's easy. Games to you. Games to you.com or 545-GAME, 210 area code, of course. Give us a call. We can bring this to your backyard, front yard, church, school, football field, stadium, wherever you want. And just a word to the wise. You may think you're young at heart, but <laughs> just wait you get on it. Take my word for it. <laughs> Do you have any ibuprofen? 
Uh, yeah. Okay, good. It's a big time, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next on SA Live, she's 20 stories above the Riverwalk. Ooh, and enjoying a nice drink. Our Jen Tobias Trusky is going to show us how to take an incredible view to the next level. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, let's head back out to Jen and that breathtaking view of the Alamo City. I love the name. She is at the Moon's Daughters, a brand new rooftop restaurant and barn. Already tried the amazing food. What's next, Jen? Of course you need something to wash it down with, right? So we have cocktails here. I have Zach Shore joining me. He's the director of beverage here at the Moon's Daughters. And you're gonna make for us some of the signature cocktails, right? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, so this, this first one we got is the Salty Kanye. It's kind of a riff on a salty dog. Uh, Kanye is the Italian word for dog. Uh, and so what we have here is a special ingredient made in house uh, with Campari salt, so the Italian Amaro. And if you could just start by spritzing that glass with some absinthe. Just like that? Yeah. <laughs> it gives it a nice little uh, anise flavor. We're going to add some Kettle One Botanical uh, Grapefruit and Rose. Uh, just bring out that botanical flavor, a little lemon juice to brighten it up. And you can't do anything without a little simple syrup. Yes. Here you I go. Love grapefruit, by the way. <laughs> what, a, what a great place to, to enjoy drinks. You said a lot of people have been showing up already to, to try it out, right? Definitely. Um, we've uh, we've been booked solid every night, so definitely recommend making that reservation ahead of time. Uh, but we've got great uh, great entertainment on the weekends. Uh, tonight we're featuring an aerialist and a DJ what? as well. Yeah, she uh, sits right there against the sunset and uh, does some tricks all night for you. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. this is great to cool off too because it's a little warm now. Absolutely. Out there. Ooh, look at that. All right. So a little salty dog here for you. I'll sip on that. And, All right. And then you can tell me about what we have here, because if you look around, guys, I know you got to see the view earlier on that side. Then you saw me sitting outside, but there's also this gorgeous area. I love the moon there. Yeah. So if you want to take a walk with me, we can go ahead and uh, take a look. So over here, we call this our moon suite. Uh, you can book this out for a party up to 20 people. A uh, nice little moon there with some live plants for your uh, enjoyment. Walking around, you know, we have a really big space. We usually put our DJ over here so people can in, uh, enjoy themselves on the floor. Uh, beautiful patio out there that views the sunset. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, so the sunset would be this way. Yeah, we call it our sunset terrace. So, Gorgeous. A uh, little pair of binoculars out there so you can spy on all the neighbors. Let me tell you, doing. those are the best binoculars I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, you want to finish off one more drink? So yeah, let's do one more. Plenty of space, guys. I Absolutely. love this. Zach, and I'm going to even give this one a try at the end here. All right, so what's the next one we're going to make? So this next one is an old-fashioned riff. Uh, we call it the Moon Over Morocco. We use a spice uh, in the kitchen with Chef Rob called Raz El Hanout. Uh, what that means is the head of the shop. So uh, uh, they use all the best spices. Um, grouping, we use St. Liberty Birdies Bourbon, uh, local owner, uh, and with that, a truck. And out oh, of the just know, when he's making that, that cocktail. Right? You know, well, hey, it's a Friday. Even yes. the equipment's taking off early, right? That's just called like, technical we're difficulties. <laughs> But again, that's at the top of the, uh, the Thompson yeah. Hotel right there on uh, St. Mary's. And I love the inside. Yeah. Very elegant, but very understated, so you can enjoy the view. Yeah, really modern. The Moon's Daughters. Brand new rooftop restaurant. So check it out. Coming up on SA Live, Mike Osrage getting into a hamster ball. Don't worry, I'm next. And we're going to see who gets to the end and back first in a hamster ball race. I'm OK. Are you all right? I think. What? So that go in here. Yeah. Where'd you go? Time for the finale of our outdoor games and we saved the best for last? Did we? Did we? Because we sure had a ball. At least I did. I don't know about Mike. <laughs> but here's a look at how our hamster ball race turned out. Here's our dual hamster ball racetrack. 80 feet up, 80 feet back, head to head hamster balls. They are the hamsters inside. And we're gonna go in three, two, one. Go, 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 go. Wow! Fiona's got out by a neck. Mike seems to be struggling. Mike seems to be close. Mike goes down, he tumbles. Fiona hits the round. 
coming back. Mike is on his back, not making much progress. Fiona's hitting her stride down the home stretch. Wins by a breakout. Fiona, Mike seems to be uh, still down. Oh, God, wait a minute. Did I win? Oh, my God. <laughs> run, hamster, run! Watch the hole! And Mike comes oh, in God. with style. There we are. Oh, and he, he goes over the other side. Are you okay? What? Did you hurt? How's your rotator cut? <laughs> That's fine, the rest of me. <laughs> Tomorrow on SA Live, if you're tired of the same old coffee routine, change it up with some refreshing spring flavors. We're mixing up some fruity and floral Italian sodas from a local coffee shop. And summer is coming. That means it's time to sign your kids up for summer camp before it's too late. We share a list of camps happening around town. It's all tomorrow at 1 right here on SA Live. We greatly appreciate yes. it. Yes, please tune in tomorrow, <laughs> same time, same place.